Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I am hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So, this video is getting recorded on a completely different device. Continuously getting downgraded. So I started at a really good device. I moved down to a Chromebook. And now this is the, probably the cheapest Chromebook I could find. I didn't break that one, but it malfunctioned somehow. So I guess if you want to call it, I think I'll get it back in a couple of days. I returned it to repair. And hopefully that will return back. But um, this brings up the perfect occasion. If you'd like to support this channel so I could get a better device. Because right now, I literally can't, guys. Uh, this has been running low on on many things. So if you'd like to support this, you can subscribe. Get my viewers, my channel, my videos get out to more people. And then I can uh, get more viewers. And that will give me a little bit more cash so I can buy a better Chromebook with. This is completely optional. And... I'm not trying to sound like if I am begging you to give me money, but it's it's a very helpful thing you could do. If you want to help me in an even more direct way, I have a Patreon, and I'll post a link to it in the description box below. All you do is be, click on Become a Patreon. You uh, sign up, and you donate however much you want. Look at this, $2, $5, $10, $25. If you donate two, I'll be so happy, guys. 25 I don't expect anyone to do. I don't even expect anyone to do this in the first place. It's, I mean, I still I have six patrons, which is just incredible, but this is something, if you'd like to support this channel and make it, uh, you know, keep me on the road, because right now things are getting a little bit shaky. This video is going to be about the potential for a greater or for an Arctic outbreak that will be occurring in the next couple, sorry about that, in the next couple of days. And this will be very prolonged. So typically we see one shot of cold air, and then we see a let up, and then maybe we see a warm up maybe then another cold blast of air and this time around i'll say the first two cold blasts of air aren't going to be necessarily too bad sorry but sorry if i keep turning around but um the audio is a little bit messed up so the first two arctic blasts aren't going to be that bad they're going to be chilly they're going to bring bitter to cold temps but there's a third one i think it's the third one that is looking very concerning it could literally be a piece if not basically the polar vortex coming down into the central United States. We could be witnessing temperatures as a little as fucking uh as little as negative thirty in some areas, especially towards the north. So this is definitely something we we'll need to keep monitoring. And this is definitely life threatening. So let's just go into this. I won't be focusing on Winter Storm Harper. I made several videos on it. And I just again with that device switch, the, the device is being broken. <laughs> I didn't have time to record another video right in the time in front of the storm, but that's okay. So we're looking right now at the two meter temperature anomalies. This basically tells you where it is above or below average. The red is above average, blue is below average at what given time, which is right here. So we're right now at Saturday or Friday evening, seven o'clock. We have the storm right in here, winter storm harbor producing plenty of snow. Right now, as I'm recording this video, it is pounding outside of my house. Uh, we're supposed to get around 8 to 12 inches in Chicago with the lake effect. But um, this video will be up on Saturday around 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. So we see right now nothing major in terms of cold air. But after the storm, we quickly get a nice shot of cold air. Things get really nice cold and chilly, especially for the northeast. We get a warm up after that. And it's around midweek. We could be seeing a snow system again. Another almost deja vu. That's what the Weather Channel called it. And I liked it actually that they called it that. A deja vu of the uh, winter storm Harper. It could be another one of those. Maybe not as strong and a little bit further to the north. So areas that got snow with winter storm Harper may now be seeing rain. So, yes, is that. Is that a good thing? No, because snow, warm temperatures, and rain could lead to flooding. But the temperatures will be very marginal, and it will just be warm enough for it to be raining. Otherwise, right after this, we get a, a second little chilly blast. Right in here, you can see uh, Thursday into Friday. And this is where things start going a little bit on the wild side. So th this is basically around the Friday, into around this time of the week to next week that we're around friday saturday time frame but next sorry about that next week around january 25th 24th um you could see a big 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 low of cold air is moving down <clears throat> into the south and this one at this point is seeming to be much more cold than this one we're seeing right now but the thing with these uh, lobes of cold air is that the for, 
the closer we get to the actual event, it seems the intensity and magnitude of the cold seems to go down. And that's just what the models do. It's not really, it's not really anything alarming. It's just what the models do. And we got to incorporate that into our forecast because what I'm about to show you will be very concerning and would be absolutely devastating for on many different uh, levels. But like I mentioned, it could still be a little bit less, if not significantly less, uh, of a magnitude of cold than what they're showing right now. So look at this. Com completely 20 to 30 degrees below average in the heart of winter is just perfect recipe for negative into the negatives wind chills and temperatures just look at that that bright color right there that is around 28 to 30 degrees below average this is literally the polar vortex right here um this is this is we don't see this every year we saw this last year we saw this the year before not too not too great as potentially this but um we saw i think the closest one to this was 2014 2015 february and i made a video a couple of weeks back saying explaining why january and february may be very cold and look guys i mean my forecasts have been fairly good so far this winter and it's another thing i was right on i'm not trying to boost or anything but it's 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 many, what many people were predicting. I know uh, there was a lot of other YouTube meteorologists that predicted the snow fucking and or predicted a cold and snowy January and February. And look, guys, just because we're not meteorologists and are weather enthusiasts does not mean that we're going to be wrong with this. We could still we still typically sometimes are even more right than a weather channel, which typically has the agenda um, to complete. And as we don't, we just want to tell you out the truth. So this is as far as it goes. But look at this. It just um, continually stays cold and there's no time, no signs of release into February 3rd. Or this is uh, February 3rd and the month of February may be also record-breaking cold. So now it's the moment of truth. You saw how much below average it is. Let's quickly check the length of this. Didn't get too long. Uh, let's go to the moment of truth. The actual two meter temperatures, which shows you what the temperature will be at two meters above uh, ground level, which is typically the average height of a human being around plus or minus a um, couple of feet. So right now, seeing obviously below average uh, te or freezing temperatures, I should say below 32 degrees. That's why there's snow falling in the first place. And But we see this colder creeping. Look at that negative 30 by James Bay and Hudson Bay. That's where the polar bears live, in case you don't know. I was also surprised by this fact. This is a quick little fact that uh, polar bears actually live right in this area. There's the Polar Bear National Park. And it doesn't seem that far away from the most northern point of the United States, but that's where the polar bears live. And look, negative 30, negative 40 in air temperature. That's not calculating in the wind chill. Very chilly. And this essentially dives down into the United States. Look at that. Um, zero, five. These are morning temperatures for Monday. Very, very, very chilly. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Very, uh, very, very, uh, very chilly day. It passes through uh, with, uh, sorry, I'm losing my train of thought here. The system that is, I called it a deja vu of the winter storm harbor passes through, and you can see it warms things up above 30 degrees for quite a bit of areas and quite a bit further to the north. So these areas could be rain, but then right after that, look at that, just a flash freeze, very cold. And then this is where things start getting wild. Look at those temperatures, almost negative 50 degrees. That That is downright cold. And look how cold it gets down here. I mean, we see negative 40, 50. Again, I'm not alarming that this is going to be happening, and I'm not a alarmist saying that uh, this is com this is 100% right. These are models. You're not supposed to base your forecast, um, or you're not supposed to. Models aren't your forecast. You can base your forecast off models. You're not, not supposed to use the models as a forecast. But this would be downright cold and dangerous, and I just don't see it happening this cold. But I do think definitely some very chilly times are heading towards us. So. <clears throat> that's basically what I just wanted to cover in this video. Let's quickly go to the 6 to 10 day outlook to show you that to, uh, the temperature probabilities. This basically shows you how confident the Climate Prediction Center is in it being below above average. Your red is above, the blue is below, and look at that. The eastern eastern half of the country way below. A little bit warmer in the west. And preset probability above average. So with that cold, that would mean more snow for your snow lovers if you love it. And in terms of the 8 to 14 day outlook, all the way to February 1st, almost Groundhog Day, still the cold remains for the eastern half of the country does not let up and still possibly a little bit warmer in the west. 
and an above average precip gets limited to the north. But that you know, I mean, above average precip plus that very very cold air can mean quite a bit of snow for states like Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, upstate New York, and Michigan. So, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I, I will again consider becoming a patron. Uh, consider subscribing. It's it's really helpful. And I'll catch you all guys in the next episode. See ya. Bye.